Hey all, this is Ron, and this is an Anno Mini, in which I would like to talk about three movies, Clerks, Heathers, and Slacker. If you want to understand Generation X, you need to watch all three of these movies. The Millennials and Boomers right now, they're having a constant fight, a battle. They lob bombs at each other on social media, there's articles extolling the virtues of one and the negative aspects of the other. And meanwhile, the forgotten generation is on the sidelines and just sort of wondering. They understand both. They sometimes try to translate between the two. But they're just wondering, why can't we all just get along? And they just kind of keep on keeping on doing their thing. Now, uh, all right, the three movies. Clerks came out in 94, Heathers in 1988, and Slacker 1990. And just a note, that Slacker, singular, not Slacker with an S. Uh, that's a totally different movie. Now, all three movies grossed a little over $1 million. The difference is that Clerks and Slacker uh, each cost, like good indie films, about $23,000. Uh, Heather cost $3 million. Uh, it actually lost money, but it still plays an important role in, in this period of uh, film. Clerks was written and directed by Kevin Smith. There's a lot of nonstop dialogue. In fact, the whole movie is nothing but dialogue. All the words of Kevin Smith. He plays a character called Silent Bob. It's ironic. He's, he doesn't have almost any words or no words for most of the movie. And in the end, he uh, says a few things to the protagonist, Dante, uh, giving him some advice. Kevin Smith, who wrote everything in real life, he talks nonstop, if you, if you ever hear him. Now, Clerks is a basic non-story. There's no real plot. Dante works at a convenience store, the Quick Stop. Randall works at the video store next door. Uh, and Dante gets a call at 6 a.m. asking him to come into work and fill in for a sick co-worker. Dante had closed uh, the store the night before at midnight, and he resists, or he really doesn't want to go into work for, you know, for obvious reasons, but he does. Uh, it is his duty. He not only has to respond, he himself internally feels that there's, he has to do the job. He's even told at one point, you are too responsible. Now, he repeats throughout the movie, he complains, uh, I'm not even supposed to be here today. But despite that, he's there. Now, meanwhile, uh, Randall, who works at the video store, is his foil. Randall is insubordinate. Randall closes the store for half the time in order to uh, hang around and talk to Dante. And when he, is, when he is at the store, or even sometimes when he's hanging out at the convenience store, he is rude to his customers. He doesn't want to uh, deal with them. Uh, now, he's the one that has some of the best lines. He's erudite. He's smart. But that doesn't mean that he's actually going to do his job. Now, although he is the one that provides some, uh, uh, some advice to Dante in the end, so while Dante is resigned to his fate, and doesn't think that he can change himself or the world, Randall tries to lead him out of his purgatory and lead him to, in the Divine Comedy, send him off to Paradiso. Heathers. Heathers, uh, I'm talking about the 1988 film starring Winona Wright and Christian Slater. I'm not talking about the recent TV remake. Uh, Heather, uh, it begins with the three rulers of the school, the mean girls, all named Heather, and led by Heather Chandler, who's the leader and the most popular girl in school, uh, they appear in Veronica's dream sequence. Veronica is sort of their friends. She sort of wants to be with them, but she also doesn't like them. Not exactly frenemies. Uh, Veronica, uh, in the dream, Veronica's head sticks out of the ground, and Heather Chandler, playing croquet, knocks a croquet ball at her head. So Veronica plays with them, but uh, she's not dealt in a particularly positive way. Uh, the movie centers around J.D. and Veronica. Uh, J.D. is the new kid in school. Uh, J.D. leads her. Veronica unwittingly then reluctantly follows. Uh, they kill the popular kids, starting with Heather Chandler and then two jerky uh, uh, jocks. Veronica doesn't want to kill. Veronica wants to upset things a little bit. Veronica wants... Uh, she's, she's, she's insubordinate, but she is not a killer. Uh, J.D. is. Uh, so between the two of them, uh, they fake some suicide notes. But what happens in the end is that the popular kids become even more popular. The fake suicide notes give them depth, depth that they never expressed in real life. Veronica is mildly insubordinate, but she doesn't want to upset the cart. Uh, she is not a rebel. J.D. just wants to kill. He is an advocate of chaos and destruction. Veronica calls him out on it. The direct quote, think you're a rebel? Do you actually think you're a rebel? You're not a rebel. You're fucking psychotic. Uh, JD stands for Jason Dean. So just a reminder of James Dean, a rebel without a cause. The opening song over the opening credits and over the closing credits are both covers of Que Sera Sera, 
whatever will be, will be. And that expresses uh, Veronica's uh, attitude. She is representative of Generation X. She wants to upset the car just a little bit, kind of give it a nudge, but she doesn't want to actually upset it altogether and, and change the social order. Now, Veronica, uh, you know, say, unlike the, the talk between the, 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 the war between the millennials and the baby boomers who don't seem to under, understand each other, Veronica does understand. Uh, when she talks to her father, they have this interesting conversation that they repeat several times. Dad begins... God damn, will somebody tell me why I read these spy novels? And Veronica responds, because you're an idiot. Dad responds with, oh yeah. And mom, who's watching on the sidelines, just kind of says, you too. It's not that big a deal uh, between uh, uh, dad and Veronica. You know, she's sure she calls her, her dad an idiot. But he accepts it. He realized that it's true. Uh, another one of these conversations, God damn, will somebody tell me why I smoke these damn things? Because you're an idiot. Oh yeah, that's it. You too. And again, there's repeated uh, several times. This is uh, the order of things. Nothing too harsh, nothing too rebellious, just pushing back a little bit and, and making the, the baby boomers understand themselves. Heather doesn't want to kill her friends. Uh, and she says, so I don't want to kill my friends. I don't want to kill. Killing doesn't solve anything. She actually just tries uh, to get Heather to puke her guts out by mixing orange juice and milk and maybe even uh, some phlegm, some phlegm balls, although neither uh, J.D. or Veronica are able, to, uh, are able to put in the, spit out some phlegm balls. Now, meanwhile, J.D. wants to kill her. He pours a cup of blue liquid, uh, liquid drainer, which uh, Heather actually drinks and falls through a glass table. She is dead um, to cover it up. They fake the suicide note and suddenly... She's more popular and has more depth than ever. Now, uh, I, I just got to get to this. One of my favorite films, or my favorite film in the movie, and I like to repeat this uh, in, in public, Fuck Me Gently with a Chainsaw. And I always forget that it's followed, uh, followed up by Do I Look Like Mother Teresa? I, I love that quote. All right, Slacker. Slacker was written and directed by Richard Linklater, and it begins with him. Now, this uh, begins with him talking and talking nonstop for a while. Now, this movie has no story or plot. The camera spends a day in Austin, and I say the camera. It's the camera and the microphone. They just kind of follow a bunch of people, mostly in their 20s. There's a few older, older folks and one scene with kids. Uh, but we see over a dozen people. And the camera and the microphone, we even see the boom mic by accident, uh, even making an accidental appearance. Uh, follow these folks and we get a conversation sometimes it's longer sometimes it's shorter sometimes it's one-sided like the beginning Richard Linkletter uh, uh, conversation he's uh, he, he, he comes into town on a bus he gets into a cab and he just talks for about five minutes to the cab the cab never responds and Richard Linkletter doesn't seem to ever have a, a desire for the for the other person to respond so just a reminder again this movie is slack or singular not plural uh, but these movies th these people are so different the title suggests that these are all the same, they all act the same, they all think the same, but as we find out, they don't. I mean, some of the scenes, we have a man and a woman who are walking to see a movie and they end up having a somewhat quiet, quiet spat. Uh, a woman holds out a deck of cards, oblique strategies, and a man picks a few of them. I'll get back to that in a moment. A man is turned away from a club because he's not on the band's guest list like he thought he would. He's also kind of hitting on one of the women. I mean, it's uh, somewhat overt, but uh, at the same time, not too pushy. And she just kind of shruggingly accepts it and goes along with it. Now, some of the conversations are more f philosophical, some are more grounded, and there are even the occasional conspiracy theorists that stand out. Now, the folks are kind of, most of the folks are kind of shrugging their way throughout throughout the movie. Uh, the ones that are the most, uh, the most animated are the conspiracy theorists and a few fans that actually advocate political violence. Now, I mentioned the oblique strategies. Uh, let me just read the description. They are a real thing uh, from Wikipedia. Quote, oblique strategies, subtitled over 100 worthwhile dilemmas, is a card-based method for promoting creative creativity jointly created by Brian Eno and Peter Schmidt. So these are real things. Or, or the guy that's picking out uh, the cards, one of the quotes is, withdrawing in disgust is not the same thing as apathy. Uh, this is actually quoted uh, sort of in, ap in uh, REM's What's the Frequency, Kenneth? Uh, now, there's even a woman with a Madonna pap smear who believes that the pap smear uh, has one of Madonna's uh, pu uh, pubic hairs. And she's very excited about it, and she actually tries to sell the pubic hair. She's actually pretty animated. Now, uh, in one of the scenes, there are two people, a man and a woman, who are in a bookstore. Now, she enters, she's kind of looking, and she ends up at the conspiracy, uh, conspiracy section, and she picks out a book. She's kind of leafing through it. And the guy shows up, 
And he, he recognizes her from a film class that they took together. She doesn't recognize him. He asks her uh, how she's doing. She responds a few sentences. Uh, she actually graduated a few years ago, and now she's kind of hanging around doing her thing. Uh, then she asks him what, what he's doing. And his response begins with, oh, yeah, you know me. Um, and then he goes on to talk about a conspiracy theory book that he's, uh, that he's writing. Now he's back to the, that, what he says. Oh, yeah, you know me. But she doesn't know him. She has no idea who he is, and he's telling her about what uh, what he's doing, but everything is news to her about him. And this whole notion uh, that uh, she doesn't know him and he says, you know me, I mean, the reality is we don't know who the folks are in the slacker generation, uh, at, at least as one monolithic entity. They are so different. They all have their own ideas. They all have their own thoughts. They all do different things. Uh, so the irony is that we don't know these people. There isn't just one slacker. Uh, that define them all. These are all different people. They might have, most of them have sort of a shrugging, lackadaisical attitude, but that belies the truth uh, of their differences in in their thoughts and their beliefs underneath. Now, there is the old anarchist, and he's talking to, um, to one of the folks in their 20s, and he says to him, and remember, the passion for this destruction is also a creative passion. Now, he claims to have been part of the Lincoln Brigades during the Spanish Civil War in uh, the late 30s. Uh, his daughter, uh, she tells uh, the, the truth uh, that he never fought in that. He, he and his wife went to Spain in the 50s, but that was about it and his involvement. Now, the old anarchist uh, is all for uh, political assassinations and chaos. He says he wants to Guy Fox, the Texas legislator, and he glamorizes the Texas Tower Massacre in which uh, Whitman fired at random people, killing 11 of them and hurting about 30 more. We can't believe what the old anarchist said. He lies about the liquid Lincoln brigades and he glamorizes these meaningless actions. So we can't believe what he says. So when he says that uh, the passion for destruction is also a creative passion, we can't believe him. Uh, this is not true. And, and in that sense, the, the, the slackers um, in their 20s, and also, I believe, early 30s, uh, possibly, they don't want to destroy. They just want to be. One of the folks even says, keep on keeping on. And then finally, there is the poster for the film, and the, uh, actually even the cover of the DVD. Uh, this is pretty iconic, or at least in associating it with, with this movie. Uh, the cover is of a young man with a baseball cap and sunglasses looking up, and he looks like the prototypical slacker. That's actually the woman with the Madonna pap smear, and she's pretty animated. I mean, talk about undermining a lab label. She's not even close to being uh, a quote-unquote slacker. So we've got, in all three movies, protagonists who just kind of seem to go through life doing their thing. Uh, they're hardworking. They have a lot to do and say. Now, they're inspired, or at least as an attempt to inspire them, uh, by their foils who actually advocate chaos and destruction. But that's not what the slacker generation wants to do. Uh, they don't want to upset the car too much. They just want to kind of poke at it a little bit, kind of kind of shake it up. But these folks, they're hard workers. Their attitude is somewhat ironic. And I'll use the word again, uh, lackadaisical. The apathy and slacking, those are epithets. Apathy is a bad word. Uh, they might be going through life kind of sh with a shrugging, slacking exterior, but that's just a veneer. Because underneath, even Jane, Silent Bob are stoners who are hardworking, who care. And Jane, Silent Bob in uh, Clerks, they actually, uh, they're two stoners that spend the whole day outside of the quick stop. Uh, they're the ones that actually make it to other movies. They make it to Mallrats, Dogma, they even have their own movie, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. And there's actually a reboot coming out uh, for this. It's currently in post-production, so soon we'll have another Jay and Silent Bob. They spend their day uh, selling pot. You know, not, not, not the hard drugs, uh, I don't know what to call it, the, the soft drugs. They're spending the whole day outdoors from morning till night uh, at the same time that Dante is working. They never sit. They don't even get to do that. They might lean against the wall. They might dance a little bit. But they're standing there upright and they're doing a service to the community. People want their pot. They provide it. They're hard workers and they have a purpose in life. They have a place in the world. They're actually doing something. And they provide Dante with a good advice at the end. They're actually pretty thoughtful. So anyways, that's it. I think if you watch these movies, you'll understand Generation X in the same way that Generation X understands the millennials and the baby boomers.
All right. That's all. And this is Ron signing off. Take care.